Hello! I thought I would try to do a video lesson on persuasive speaking so that you have something to refer back to. And it gives me an opportunity to upload something and try that maybe in a slightly different format. Some of you did that with the last speech and did a great job figuring out whether to use the video capabilities that we have on Canvas or just by loading something up on YouTube I'm thinking you set some privacy settings and then you loaded it up into this discussion section. So let's go ahead and get started. When we talk about persuasive speaking, there's roughly two categories that you can think of putting your speech into. So one is a more passive kind of public speak or persuasive speaking, and the other is definitely more where you're motivating somebody to act. So just to be clear, a persuasive speech is very different from an informative speech, although you probably will include some type of information even in your persuasive speech. The idea though, the overall idea, is that you are trying to get someone to change their attitude, belief, value system, or to get them to further agree with a value, an attitude, or a belief. So in order to do that, when we talk about something being more passive, you're really kind of stating an opinion and supporting it with information in order to persuade people to believe as you do. And these can include some really fun things. This is the speech where I always encourage people, have a little fun with it. So maybe you're persuading people to believe that there really is a Bigfoot or that there are mermaids or that there could easily be life on other planets. And this is an opportunity for you to sort of say your opinion and have people follow you and agree or disagree with you, but you're hoping that they really sink their teeth into it and believe. Some people will do things along the lines of, saying things like exercise is the way to stay healthy, fit, and fabulous. Some people will say something along the lines of, oh, I'm trying to think, that gardening is the only way that we're ever really going to be able to continue to sustain our own food and support ourselves. People will have all kinds of things that fall more into an opinion side of things. And this is where, as I mentioned, you'll really want to look into your resources. Figure out how do you want to persuade people. And we'll get back to that in just a second because I want you to start kind of thinking about logic, emotion, and credibility. So if you're going to do something more of a motivating to act type of speech, this is where you're literally asking people to do something, to go out and volunteer, to have a regular sleep schedule, to eat better, to... There's so many things that you can get people to go out and do. So this, find a summer job, make a resume, there's, you're just getting them to do something in an action. So in order to do this, if you're really going to persuade people, you have to figure out what method, what argument approach do you want to take to things. So this is along the lines of logic, emotion, and credibility, as I mentioned. So logic is definitely where you're thinking and gathering uh, statistics and facts and information that it's concrete, it's evidence based on research. If you go more the emotional route, you're really playing to people's heartstrings, right? So if you're persuading us that adoption of an older pet is much more beneficial than a younger pet or a puppy, then you're really, you can have some statistics, but you're really maybe playing on the heartstrings that these are pets that need homes. These are animals that really during their second half or later in life, they need us almost as much as we need them. So you're playing at people's emotions. And the thing that always comes to mind for me is the Sarah McLaughlin commercials for uh, sending in money to support orphaned, abandoned 
animals in shelters. And it's one of those that really plays at our emotion. Even commercials, if you think about it, certain commercials will really start tugging at emotions. They want us to uh, reach out and connect to people through uh, whatever telephone program service they have. Or they want us to feel like going to Bob Evans is like having Sunday breakfast at home or something like that. They're really tugging at your emotions. The credibility argument is different than the other two in that it's really focusing on does the audience think that the speaker is credible? Credibility has a lot to do with does the audience think that you're an honest person, that you mean well, that you have the audience's best intentions in mind? So usually I feel like this comes a little bit more into play if a celebrity is doing a some sort of a Think about a makeup commercial or uh, there's hair products and makeup products and uh, face cream products or I think about it in terms of think about the presidential race right so you, even in a debate anytime that the candidates are talking the focus is on trying to get people to believe that they really care about them that they want to improve the economy to offer more jobs to improve education these are all things that they're trying to portray that they care about their constituents. They want you to vote for them. So some of it also has to do with, uh, I'll call it charisma. We can all look at even just the debates with the Democratic candidates a few months ago, and there are certain candidates as they get up and they talk, you either like them or you maybe don't like them so much. There's just something that either hits home or doesn't hit home for you. So once you figure out, are you doing more a persuasive speech to motivate people to act, to go out and do something, or are you trying to persuade them to believe as you do? So you get that set, and then you have to figure out, well, how am I going to approach this? Do I want to approach it logically and give lots of facts and statistics? Do I want to plea to somebody's emotions? Or do I want them to really understand credibility? Maybe you're encouraging us that it's never too late to learn how to ski. And your our, our golf, I mean, think about golf. You can start pretty much at any age and you can play your entire life. And if you go in, on and say, well, I've been playing golf since I was five and my dad started taking me out on the course when I was young. Uh, my brothers and sisters played. Now we play as a family. There's so many things that you're saying in terms of what you've experienced and so we believe you that you've had lessons that you've continued to play that you were on the golf team at high school there's all kinds of ways to sort of get at the credibility aspect once you figure out what form of argument you're going to use you're also thinking about your thesis and your thesis in a persuasive speech is one that it's got to be a short simple declarative statement you don't have to include necessarily the three points you're going to talk about. That's something that you say in your introduction. The thesis is something you and I see, not necessarily those that you're addressing. The thesis is something that you have to think about. Are you presenting a question of fact, a question of policy, or a question of value? These tie right into maybe your type of argument the logic, emotion, the credibility. Something to keep in mind is that a question of fact is that you are saying something that people will say it's either true or it's false. True. Um, you could say something along the lines of there's life on other planets or there could be life on two moons outside of Jupiter. Okay, that's either true or false. And then your argument is more likely if you're talking about something factual, to be along the lines of something logical. You're gathering information and research based on these two moons, what can they provide for humans in terms of oxygen, sustainability, food, living conditions, that kind of thing. If you are looking at a question of value, you're talking about whether something is more along the moral lines, something's right or something's wrong. Now, 
in the past, I've often said to people, there are so many topics that seem like people have done them and done them and done them. And these are along the lines of uh, right to life, whether or not there should be uh, like a death sentence and whether it's electrocution or injection, that kind of thing. These are things that while we sometimes can get tired of hearing about them, there's sometimes a resurgence as well. So right now with like the political campaign, you have candidates that are pretty much putting out on the line what their belief system is. A few years ago, there was a huge piece in terms of people feeling frustrated with Planned Parenthood. And there's plenty of information there to figure out whether you are for or against their services, whether someone in some of the centers was abusing the, the budget, whatever the case may be. But you have people that will come forward or present an argument along the lines of the services that they, are, they do provide and that so many of them actually follow through on what they're supposed to do in terms of why, what's the mission of Planned Parenthood. A number of years ago, I had a, a young man who presented a persuasive speech on understanding a little bit more about that decision in terms of abortion or not abortion. And he presented it more from a personal perspective of a friend of his had been dating a gal for a long time and she got pregnant and she made the decision. And his friend was absolutely devastated because he wasn't part of the decision making and he might have chosen something slightly different. There wasn't much of a discussion between the two of them. So some of these topics, depending on how you approach them, can be something that proved to be relevant, persuasive, and give us a different perspective and, and new information that tug us one way or the other. If we talk about something like a question of policy, policy has to do more with, can we change something? And this can be, I mean, for years, it was, you know, can we, we should legalize marijuana or we should change the drinking age to 18. We're talking about things that have a little bit more to do with policy, law, whether it's local, state, or government, that kind of thing. So when you've picked your topic and you think about what argument you want to use, logic, emotion, or credibility, you're also going to want to phrase your thesis so that it shows that you are putting out something along the lines of a question of fact, a question of policy, or a question of value. These are things that can make a really solid persuasive speech because the goal is whoever's watching and listening to your speech, you want them to further believe or change their attitude, belief, opinion, values, whatever they are. Now, all of that being said, the thing I also really want you to concentrate on, if you're going to persuade us, how are you going to do that? Are you going to stand up and say, hi, today I'm going to be talking to you about why we should release prisoners that have been sentenced due to uh, only, uh, holding marijuana? Do you see that I'm probably not that excited about my topic? I'm not saying that everybody has to run around like, I think his name's Billy Mays, right, where we talked about, ShamWow, you too can have the greatest, newest product, and you can wipe everything up, and you can squeeze it back out. You can clean up an entire quart of Kool-Aid. I mean, enthusiasm does catch people's attention, and if you think about it, there's a lot of commercials where that's what catches your attention is you're listening to the excitement in someone's voice. The other thing that can catch your attention is whether or not someone's looking at you. And I want you to think about this. If you have little people that you are around here and there, if you have pets, especially dogs, that are around you, you know that the one thing they can do to really get you to give them what they want is they can give you those sad puppy eyes and they look at you and they say can I have a cookie please can I have a cookie if they're not looking at you if they're off somewhere else and someone's like 
Hey, I need a piece of cake. Hey, give me a hamburger. It's not very convincing. So while you're presenting, something I want you to think about is looking, and most of you are doing a great job of that, but looking at your audience and really bringing, I'm going to say passion, the passion, the emotion, the energy in your speech. You're not yelling at people. You're not just jumping up and down for joy or anger or whatever, but you're trying to get people to listen and hang on to every word because it's so different to say, I believe that mermaids exist as opposed to, could you imagine if you were out on a cruise ship and you looked over the deck and there you saw fins like you've never really seen before, except in pictures. And you realize that's not, a small whale it's not a dolphin what oh my gosh it's a mermaid did you know that mermaids really exist and then you can launch into the material and your main points as to how you've proven and others have proven that mermaids really exist and while you might be laughing at me I can tell you that I had a student a few years ago that presented an amazing speech and there's been research done a few years ago, I believe it was on Nat Geo. Um, there was a kind of a documentary type thing about guys that had been in a submersible and they kept taking pictures of things that they couldn't, they couldn't hardly say that it wasn't a mermaid. That's what they were looking for. Okay, so all of this being said, what I'm really looking for in this round, and many of you know, because I'll write it all down as well, Another five to six minute speech. Send me your topic as soon as you can. You'll need four or five resources. Dig into this, folks. Find some things that really support your speech. I will highly recommend that you get on the Zanow Library website. And in the left drop down menu, remember you can click on download, uh, I'm sorry, on databases. There are several that are really good for this one. Um, one of them is opposing viewpoints. So whatever side you believe, you can also find information to support that or combat it. I really don't mind if you have a situation where you're going to present to us all the reasons to do something, but you also kind of address, people often say this, yet if they look into this, then this, you're sort of refuting the argument. You can also use ProQuest, Credo, C-R-E-D-O, and there's also one, if you go down to C, it's like Communication and Media Studies, it's kind of a long one. So definitely look at that. Remember, you can use Google Scholar, and you can use Google, but I want at least two, possibly three, from Xano. I want you to find some good stuff. The other thing that I want you to keep in mind is that this is the round where you're going to do, you're going to write your outline, practice, practice it a little bit, then record yourself, watch that video recording, then write your video analysis. Because what you're doing is, it's like a practice run and you're reviewing what do you want to change, what do you want to improve? Do you want more vocal variety? Do you want more enthusiasm? Do you want more hand gestures or do you want to have more control over your hand gestures to only emphasize what you're saying rather than talking with your hands? Some of you noticed and you wrote that you're kind of swaying or you're doing something in your other video. So this is an opportunity, if you notice it, to think, oh, I need to practice and maybe not do that as much. Occasionally, somebody might figure out that they're saying um or and or something and you're going to run a run through it a few more times because this time we're actually going to try a format where we are in groups watching each other's speeches. We'll do a video conferencing type of presentation this time. So all that being said, have some fun with this round. Convince us as much as you can. And if you have any questions, by all means, send me an email.